Bristol Airport at the start of yet another busy day. It's six o'clock in the morning and flight crews get ready to fly thousands of people to more than 70 destinations right across Europe. Bristol is home to both scheduled and charter airlines, household aviation names like British Airways, EasyJet, Britannia and Air 2000. This morning, Britannia's Boeing 757 is on stand for one of its busiest days of the year. It's due to fly no less than four round-trip flights in 24 hours. For the crew, there's at least half an hour's preparation before the first passengers get on board for this flight to Mahon in Menorca. Outside the day's first load of fuel, some 12 tons of aviation kerosene, is being loaded into the jet's tanks. In the check-in hall, thousands of passengers are lined up for their flights, but today they're having to be more patient than usual since the whole operation has come to an abrupt halt. Although the passengers themselves can check in, their baggage cannot, and the queues are getting longer and longer. We had the fire alarms that, for some reason, they went off continuously. The fire alarms are linked with the baggage system and the check-in system. So as soon as the alarms go off, everything stops. And that happened continually this morning, uh, which held everything up. We couldn't get the bags out to the aircraft. Um, when we did, we then had problems getting passengers through, uh, and everyone wanted to go at once. So there was all sorts of problems this morning. Well, this is definitely probably the busiest Saturday we've had so far for holiday traffic. The baggage belt um, failures have, have caused us a great deal of problems this morning. What our task now for the rest of the day is to try and recover some of that time. Um, we have five based aircraft here in Bristol. Um, what we look at is to see if we can get one of our spare aircraft um, to Bristol to, um, to smooth things out, to smooth the operation out, and hopefully alleviate some of the delays. We do have 20 minute turnarounds of our aircraft. Um, what we'll do today, because we are running behind schedule, is, is our, our flight deck will be pushing the aircraft. They will be, in a sense, speeding, speeding along the skyways. There's such a buzz to this, to this whole life. You know, aviation is, is, it's a very fun life. It's very high stress. There's a lot of, you know, there's heavy workload, but it's the whole people interaction side of things. For passengers and staff alike, it's a frustrating time. The departure lounge is full and the planes are waiting. But without the baggage, no one is going anywhere. There's nothing else to do but sit and wait and even snooze the time away. Out on the apron, pilots with busy schedules to keep are anxious to get things moving. Back at check-in, passengers and their baggage start moving again, but the hold-ups have lasted nearly an hour. With the log jam finally clearing, the first flights can get away. Last year, four million passengers used Bristol International, making it the fourth busiest airport in the country outside London. On a typical day, airline passengers will check in over 6,000 bags, cases and other pieces of luggage. On board Britannia 006 Alpha, preparations for departure are well underway with a system of checks on over 1,000 pieces of equipment and flight controls, a procedure that's carried out every time the aircraft is about to take off. Today, those checks reveal a small, but what for the airline will turn out to be a very significant problem. Outside, the last of the 12 tons of fuel is still being loaded. 
but for the moment, this aircraft is going to remain firmly on the ground. We've got a strip of lights that run along the floor which direct people to exits. It's a strip of lights that we think we'll never ever use so long as the aircraft flies, but they've got to be there. And the last eight feet of these lights are not working, so we've got to get them repaired. It's a requirement of the Civil Aviation Authority. It's part of the safety equipment on board, and we have to have it. Uh, people get worried. They think every technical fault is an engine, serious problem with an engine or something serious with wings. It's not the case. It could be something as simple as eight feet of lighting that's not working. Britannia have sent to their base at Cardiff for a spare part to cure the fault. But airport security at Bristol won't allow the engineer in because he doesn't have the right pass. That leaves Captain Gort on a vain search for his engineer and finally having to go to the security gate himself to retrieve the part. It's literally a little transformer that's, uh, that's packed up on us. We'll change the transformer. Unfortunately, we've got to get one brought in. It's taking time and uh, it's here. We're replacing it and we'll be on our way very shortly. Spare part safely in hand, Captain Gort arrives back at the aircraft and wastes no time in getting it to where it's needed. He's needed back on the flight deck since by now flight 006 is running over two hours late in a schedule which leaves little or no time for any holdups. Meanwhile, across the tarmac from Britannia, the My Travel plane scheduled to fly to Parma in Mallorca has its own share of problems. The baggage delay means that although the captain has his full load of passengers, he only has half their cases. That leaves him with the difficult decision of whether to take off or wait for the rest of the luggage and a possible major delay. But in times of crisis, airlines can help each other, and today it's Air 2000 who come to my travel's aid. One of their flights is going to the same destination just 20 minutes behind and may be able to take the 70 missing cases. It's all down to the Air 2000 captain, who, with the expert help of the service air ground crew, must work out the extra loading and whether or not he can safely take the extra weight on board. It all requires careful checks and rechecks, but in the end, it's going to work, and the extra cases are loaded into the Air 2000 hold. But there's no reprieve for Britannia. The electrical problem is still taking time to be sorted out. My travel can get on its way, knowing that, barring last-minute hiccups, the missing baggage will be just a matter of minutes behind when they get to their destination. At last, flights are getting underway, and the airlines are starting to claw back the time they've lost. On a typical day, there are 150 aircraft movements through the airport, an average of one takeoff or landing every few minutes. The airport is one of the largest businesses in the region, employing over 2,000 people. That contributes an estimated 40 million pounds to the local economy each year. And the airport itself plans to spend 100 million pounds over the next 10 years to boost its services and facilities. Its target is a potential 13 million extra passengers in just over 25 years time. Two and a half hours after it was due to leave, Britannia flight BY006 to Mahon is finally preparing to get underway. Watching the passengers board is a major relief for station manager Steve Mackay, whose only headache now will be to see just how the delays to subsequent flights can be eased. 
He's only too aware that by the time his aircraft is finally ready to leave, the passengers for its next flight of the day, BY-223 to Malaga, will already be arriving and checking in at the airport. The final moments of departure are here, and the pushback of the aircraft can at last get underway. That just leaves Steve Mackay to discuss his options with Britannia's main base back at Luton. Today, we've taken some delays along with several other, other airlines because of lots of different problems. Um, so what I'm looking at now is uh, how do we best cut that delay to the absolute minimum? Um, so I'm sitting here and I'm looking at, let's prepare people for, for the next rotation, make sure that everything's ready. We've got the crew here now, um, and I'll be out there at the aircraft side driving that along with the dispatcher to make sure that we get it cut to an absolute minimum. Britannia flight BY006 has returned from Menorca, but the delay has only been reduced by a matter of minutes. It's going to take some seriously hard work and a bit of luck to cut that down even further. As 006 taxis slowly onto its stand, literally dozens of people are waiting in the wings. The aircraft must be unloaded, loaded, refueled, checked and rechecked before the next set of passengers can be boarded. It's an operation where timing, knowledge and teamwork are extremely important. The passengers seem to have taken the delay in their stride. No one's complaining about arriving back at Bristol a few hours late. And for Steve Mackay, it's going to be an anxious time. Even before the returning passengers have all left the plane, the next crew is already arriving. They're due to take the plane to Malaga under its new flight number BY223 Alpha. Right, the important thing is to make sure that we get everybody off and back on again as fast as possible. Uh, safety is absolutely essential, so we're watching to make sure that all the essential checks are, are being done, uh, but with as much speed as we possibly can. I'm hopeful we'll get it turned around in 45 minutes, around about that. We're nearly there, we've got virtually everyone off, and the new crew are just getting on now. So, it's taken six minutes so far, that's not bad. The hoped for 45 minutes will cut the turnaround time down by about half an hour. Today though, any saving is going to be worthwhile. But saving time doesn't mean that any corners can be cut, especially where safety is concerned. Captain Pete Warren carries out his normal outside check of the aircraft. It's detailed and certainly never hurried. Wheels, wings, flaps and engines all come under his expert eye. As one of Britannia's training captains, Pete Warren has flown more than 12,000 hours and has been with Britannia for 17 years. But for every flight, the routine is exactly the same. And flying an 80-ton Boeing 757 with over 200 passengers, 
is very different from his early years as a pilot flying Buccaneers and F-111 jets in the Royal Air Force. But whether it's the RAF or a commercial airline, it's still very much a team affair. The captain still relies on dozens of other people to carry out their specialist roles. But it is not just pilots and ground crew who have a major part in the turnaround. The aircraft must also be cleaned and restocked. While up in the cockpit, Pete and his first officer run through the same exhausting list of pre-flight checks. And all the while, eyes remain firmly on the clock as it ticks away the minutes. All right, I'm really quite pleased, actually, with the way things are going. The aircraft's been here, oh, 18 minutes now, and just looking at it, it's been cleaned virtually, just finishing off. Fuel is going on, the bags are all off, the new bags have arrived. Uh, we're doing quite well. well. In terms of the delay, we now have an ATC slot, which is 1555, so we need to go in the next 30 minutes. Um, and then crucially, we need to get the aircraft cleaned and the security checks carried out, which is uh, the cabin manager will make sure are, are completed correctly. And then the agent is actually responsible for the turnaround uh, to make sure that uh, uh, all the services are, are provided uh, correctly and on time. Uh, all we can really do is carry out our checks here to make sure that we're ready to go once the aircraft uh, cleaning and um, servicing is complete and the passengers are on board. So that we, we therefore carry out our checks such that as soon as we're told that the passengers are on board, we can close up and go immediately. And that's what we're trying to do now is to make sure that uh, the front end of the aircraft is ready to go at the appropriate time. About 28 minutes we've been on the ground now uh, and I've just got the thumbs up from the dispatcher, they're ready for passengers. We're getting our disabled passengers on now, should take about another 15 minutes, we're doing okay. With things going well, Steve is looking a much more relaxed man, but still keeps a keen eye out for any potential problems such as mobile phones, which are forbidden on the tarmac because of all the aviation fuel around, as well as on board the aircraft. Can you switch your phone off, please? You're not using it. That's great, because we're fueling here. Thank you. It had this to be off now. Yeah, OK, thank you. All right. I have okay. spotted that as, <laughs> just as you were moving forward. No problem. So. Trying to make their slot, aren't they? Well, yeah, we're all right for time. We've got another 15 minutes before the slot. It's all right, they won't go without you. <laughs> all right. Have a lovely time, girls. Bye. And with the final passengers on board, it's time for pushback, which Steve is only too keen to get going. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Pushing 90 tons of aircraft, passengers and fuel with a 10-ton tractor also takes a lot of skill. Keeping the combined weights in a straight line is harder than it looks. With the aircraft almost on its way for the second flight of the day, 
How successful had the turnaround team been? Well, we did not a bad job. I, I think we could have made maybe been about 10 minutes earlier, but uh, there was a, a very large piece of cargo inbound that slowed us up, which made the loading a little bit slow. But it's taken just under 50 minutes, so it's not too bad. So 20 vital minutes have been saved, and with the Boeing 757 now safely on its way, there's a word of thanks for the ground crew. Appreciate the effort you put in. That's all right. I really do, thank you. That's okay. Because we've on, done quite a good job, yeah, quite a good job with that one. I mean, it will say one <laughs> No, well done, guys, thank you. All right. It's now all in the hands of Pete Warren and his crew. Pete decides to use runway 09, which he knows will save him a turn over the Bristol Channel and some vital minutes. At around 140 miles an hour, the Boeing lifts clear of the runway. As it turned out, the crew's skill cut another half an hour from the delay by the time BY-223 got back to Bristol. Next week at Bristol Airport, it's training time for some visiting firemen. And Claire's solo effort as she takes her first steps towards becoming a pilot.